Good morning. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you to Digital Government and Service NL Minister Sarah Studley and Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Janice Fitzgerald for being here as well. I know Minister Haggy is very disappointed he can't be here again today, but uh, we all send him our best in his recovery and we look forward to him joining this panel again soon. I'm pleased to announce uh, the launch of COVID Alert, a free voluntary app to help limit the spread of COVID-19. Newfoundland and Labrador is the first province in Atlantic Canada to have this app available, adding one more tool when it comes to finding the new normal life that is life with COVID-19. COVID Alert is a good example of how the government of Newfoundland and Labrador is working together with our federal, provincial, and territorial partners throughout this pandemic. I will be speaking with the Prime Minister later today, and I know he is happy and excited to see more Canadians having this opportunity to use this very app. We all share the collective goal of ensuring the health and well-being of all our residents. And I can assure you, protecting the privacy of users was at the forefront in working on COVID alert. My family and I will be downloading the app, and I encourage others, all of you in fact, to do the same. This app highlights how digital technologies can not only improve how we access services, but can be an effective tool in public health. As Dr. Fitzgerald will note, it doesn't replace the traditional boots on the ground, good old fashioned epidemiology, like contact tracing, but it does help. Minister Studley will speak more to this, but I want to highlight the wonderful work being done to make this app as accessible as possible. We have some great partners at the community level. As government, we are working with them to understand what barriers, ex barriers exist when it comes to using the COVID alert. We want to work with them to reduce those barriers. As an example, we have already reached out to the Gathering Place, Seniors NL, and the Office of the Seniors Advocate. And we will be offering demonstrations to members of these groups in the weeks, months ahead. Thank you all, and I'd now like to welcome Dr. Fitzgerald. Thank you, Premier. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So the COVID Alert app is another tool that we can use to aid in reducing the spread of COVID-19. This app will help to identify potential contacts and sources of infection when they may not be immediately apparent. It is important to, know, to note that this app will not replace critical, the critical function of contact tracing that is expertly performed by public health officials. This will continue for every case that is identified in Newfoundland and Labrador. I encourage Newfoundlanders and Labradorians to download this app. And trust me, if I can figure out how it works, you guys can too. Um, having this app though does not mean that you can neglect those public health measures that have been so important in reducing the spread of COVID-19 to date. Remember to maintain physical distancing, wash your hands frequently and well, practice good cough and sneeze etiquette, and stay home if you feel unwell. If you do get a notification from this app, it means that you have had a possible exposure to COVID-19 in the past 14 days. This is not definite. Therefore, it is important to remain calm and follow the instructions on the app and our website closely regarding isolation, assessment, and testing. A notification by this app does not necessarily mean that you are a close contact to a case or that you will receive a phone call from public health officials. It simply means that you have had a potential exposure and we recommend testing. Once again, I'd like to thank pe the people of Newfoundland and Labrador for doing their part. We are where we are today because of your diligence and hard work. This app is another way that you can help to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Fitzgerald. Uh, Minister Studley would like to share her remarks now. Thank you, Premier. I'd like to start by saying how excited and honored I am to be trusted with the digital government and service NL portfolio. We have a huge opportunity to simplify processes and experience for residents in the province and to make it easier for everyone to find their an the answers they're looking for. Over the past several months, we've seen how useful online services can be and we know that people and businesses in the province are ready to use them. We have a lot of work ahead of us, but we're taking a big step forward today. I'm very honored to join Premier Fury and Dr. Fitzgerald in launching the COVID Alert app. 
Online service options have been useful in complementing traditional services during this difficult time, and the COVID Alert app is the next step in our digital government response to the public health emergency. The app, which is completely voluntary, is another tool to help limit the spread of COVID-19. While public health measures were reducing counter service and closing doors, there was a significant uptake in the use of online services available thus far. Since March, for example, individual accounts set up on MyGovNL have skyrocketed from 7,500 to more than 96,000. Uh, it's over a 780% increase. If we look at another service, our online vehicle registration renewals, they're up over 75% year over year, now with more than 98% completed online, which is incredible. As a new minister and someone who came from this industry, these numbers give me confidence that we're on the right track. I believe in the teams collaborating every day to make these online services happen, and I know that we can do more. We currently have a number of services already live in MyGovNL, such as renewing your driver's license, renewing your vehicle registration, and renewing your MCP card. MyGovNL is and will continue to be your personal online government services branch, open 24-7 and available through a pandemic. Not just in MyGovNL, but throughout your online dealings with the provincial government, my hope is that we can make things easier and simpler for you. Residents who use our online services, such as renewing your driver's license, have told us they can quickly and effectively complete the process in less than five minutes. So I encourage you to visit gov.nl.ca slash digital government to sign up for MyGovNL if you haven't already. That way you won't miss out when we add new services. I also highly recommend you download and enable the free COVID alert app on your iPhone or Android, Android device. I've had mine for a few weeks now, but with the update yesterday, uh, I, I now have it uh, ready to use. So thank you very much, everyone. Back to you, Premier. Well, thank you, Minister. I'll uh, take this opportunity to open it for questions. Thank you, Premier. For the benefit of our speakers, we have six reporters registered for today's call. They will ask questions in the order they registered. Each reporter will have the opportunity to ask one question and one follow-up. If time permits, there will be an opportunity for further questions. Our first questions today are from Peter Cowan of CBC News. Please go ahead. Thank you. Right now in this province, we've had very good success with contact tracing. Over 90% of those contacts have been made. Uh, we haven't had any community spread since April, uh, which has made contact tracing even easier. So what benefit do we get from an app, considering that we're in a very different position than other provinces that continue to have community transmission and continue to see daily cases? So I think, um, <clears throat> you know, what we have to remember is that we're preparing for the future as well. and and. So uh, there may come a time when we're not in the same situation, uh, the fortunate situation that we are right now. And in that, uh, in that case, this app will be useful and we'll have it in place. People will be familiar with it uh, for using it um, when we get to that point. Um, so again, it's not going to replace contact tracing and, and that traditional um, expert expertise from public health, uh, but it certainly is another tool that we can use. Just increasing Would the number what? of tools. Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Premier. No, I said we're just increasing the number of tools available available to us for the future, so we're growing that toolbox. If there is widespread adoption of this app, would it allow us to have more freedoms? I'm thinking, for example, saying, you know, if you're using the app, then we could have um, larger concerts or those sorts of environments where the concern is that contact tracing becomes very difficult. So I think uh, that, that's a loaded question, uh, Peter. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, we, we can't just think, okay, we can do this because we have this app. There's lots of things we have to consider before we can really, um, you know, make a decision such as that. But this app will be useful in those situations where there are larger crowds gathered together. And uh, in, um, for example, uh, bars and nightclubs uh, is one area where I see it being particularly useful. And certainly uh, anyone who is um, heading to those areas, it may be um, worthwhile or it should be, would be worthwhile to download the app in that situation. So uh, certainly there are some situations where people may have close contacts where it, it may not always be easy to identify who those are. 
um, where it will be quite useful. Um, and we would certainly encourage people to um, download the app if, if that was uh, uh, part of their everyday life. Thank you. Our next questions are from Jody Cook of NTV News. Please go ahead. Thank you. We know that you've worked with privacy commissioners, um, particularly here in this province, and they've met with others nationwide. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you can say to the public to ease any concerns about nefarious activity by use of this app, whether it be privacy breaches or hacking, so on and so forth? Um, so, Minister, yes. Um, so from my perspective, and I have a, a bit of a background in privacy, I, I'm very comfortable with this app. Um, and I know that our provincial privacy commissioner has worked with the federal privacy commissioners, and in fact, all the privacy commissioners across Canada. Um, and we are, this app, my understanding is, aligns with the framework that they've set out. Um, and I've seen that, um, you know, privacy and tech experts that I highly regard have kind of given this app the thumbs up. So I personally have a, a high degree of confidence in it, and I would recommend that uh, others do as well. On the issue of uptake, we know that this is only successful uh, based on a significant uptake in user downloads. Is there an actual number that you would like to see in this population download? On all things considered, some of our rural communities that actually don't even have access to online downloads. Um, I mean, I th the general answer to that is the more people who download the application, the better, uh, the more it helps public health officials do their jobs if there has been an exposure. And again, we recognize that there's barriers depending on where you are across the province, and we're trying to figure out best ways to to eliminate those barriers so that this app is, is more readily available and, uh, and delivers on what it's supposed to deliver on, which is uh, to help public health officials do the best job they possibly can. Our next question is from Peter Jackson of the Telegram. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, the uptake on this on, in Ontario, and I realize it's only a month, but uh, it is, it is extremely low. I'm just wondering if you're aware of any cases in Ontario where it has actually worked. Um, I don't have that uh, information, Peter, um, but we can certainly look into it for you and see if, if that information is available from Ontario. Okay. And the other question I have is that there have been numerous cases of social media harassment of people. I know you've uh, uh, pleaded for uh, uh, kindness and respect, but uh, this is going on. Uh, people who either have or even suspected of having. So how likely are we to get past this thing to convince people to electronically tag themselves, essentially, at positive? Sorry, Peter, I hate to do this, but uh, there was some a problem with the line there. Could you just repeat the qu question? It wasn't quite clear. <laughs> I'm talking about social media harassment, uh, despite pleas from government officials that's been very significant in, in, in a lot of cases. So how likely are we to get past that stigma and, and get people to electronically tag themselves? Well, I mean, it's, social media harassment is unacceptable, and we, as a society, we need to move away from that and using forms like this to encourage the use of applications that actually help public health officials do the job that they're assigned to do is one way to do so. But this is a private uh, private app. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's, in, it's private if you download it. It's private if you use it. Um, so um, with, with respect to harassment, I guess the person would have to be promoting it on social media themselves uh, if they were using the app and then subject themselves to this. But please, that's unacceptable behavior in, 20, in, in this where we are right now. It's certainly unacceptable in the case of a pandemic, and it, it should not be tolerated in any shape or form. Yes, uh, we have to remember that if you if you uh, are somebody who tests positive for COVID nineteen, and uh, you um, are contacted by public health, you will get a code that you then decide to uh, put into your phone to tell people uh, that they have potentially been exposed. Uh, that is done anonymously, um, and there, um, you know, the people who get that notification uh, don't have a way to trace that back to you. So I don't. I don't know that people are actually tagging themselves uh, in any way that would would make them uh, known to people. It's a, it's an anonymous uh, anonymous process that's happening. 
Our next questions are from Jasmine Pisano of Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, why was there such a delay in launching the COVID alert app in Newfoundland? I think we were doing our due diligence on that uh, here. Of course, we just went through a transitionary period uh, with respect to government and new ministers. And uh, my understanding is this was uh, just doing our own homework to ensure that this was a good application for the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, we've reached that point, and that's why we're announcing it today. Was the delay of it being launched in Ontario a factor in Newfoundland taking its time in launching the app? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, Minister, do you have any knowledge of that? No, not to my no. knowledge. It was all our own due diligence, is my understanding. Our next questions are from Elizabeth Witt of All Newfoundland Labrador. Please go ahead. Thank you. Since it was made available for download, uh, do you have any idea how many times it's been downloaded in this province? Uh, to my knowledge, we don't have that information at the moment, but uh, we'll certainly get that in and look at... Um, how the volumes progress is certainly as our uh, numbers of COVID. Um, it will likely influence uh, any awareness activities that we do as well. Thank you. And the Verifin app uh, that was initially being developed is, was a tracing app, whereas the COVID alert app sends a, an exposure notification. So I was wondering if you could kind of go into the differences and why you went with the exposure app. Um, I think that's best yeah. handled. Yeah. <laughs> So that, co that speaks to, public, to contact tracing, really, and, and helping public health officials. So, Dr. Fitzgerald, do you want to? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, the uh, difficulty with, the, um, uh, with having a contact tracing app, uh, which was the original, um, uh, the original uh, task, I guess, that we had, uh, had to do with privacy concerns and uh, how that would uh, be able to be rolled out, which is... Uh, uh, I think largely what influenced the decision to go with uh, the exposure notification. Thank you. Our next questions are from Brian Callahan of the OCM News. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm just wondering, first off, uh, if all of you at the table there this morning, Dr. Fitzgerald, Dr. Fitzgerald um, Premier Fury, and Minister Sully, if you have downloaded it, and, um, and I know, Premier Fury, you mentioned yourself and your family will be, I'm wondering if you all have, and members of cabinet, and, and say your office premier, and you know, it, take us inside those discussions and any concerns that were raised at those points, and if all those have been allayed by the people around you now. Well, I'll certainly be downloading it tonight, and uh, I'm being going to encourage my children to download it and on their devices, and my wife to download it on hers, uh, and all my extended family to download it as well. Um, I, th I think uh, the more people using this, the better the app works. Uh, so, uh, and again, we vetted this. We have no concerns currently. And um, so that's my answer. You've already downloaded yep. it, I'm sure. I've downloaded it. Was as it I easy? Said, it was easy. <laughs> and my kids will tell you that, um, you know, I'm not tech savvy. So if I can do it, trust me. <laughs> Um, it's easy. <laughs> I downloaded it when they launched it in Ontario just to see what it was like. Um, so I know that there's an update, I think, last night for I iOS devices. Uh, so we'd encourage you, if you'd already had it downloaded, just to update your, uh, your apps, uh, and then you'll be all ready to go. And it runs in the background, and it doesn't use very much data. Um, so we certainly encourage everyone to, to download and use the app. And just as a quick follow-up, um, Dr. Fitzgerald, you mentioned the gathering place, and those places will be, you know, there'll be information or, or sessions to, to inform. Um, you know, I'm thinking about people who don't have iPhones or Android and, uh, and are concerned and really want to take extra measures, but whatever they have to, as you said, another tool in the toolbox, uh, it can't hurt. So, um, you, you know, has that been taken into consideration? And what about those who just can't access the app? Yes, so we certainly do recognize uh, that that... Uh, uh, there, there can be potential barriers, and we are reaching out to our community um, um, stakeholders and partners um, to um, try to reduce those barriers as much as possible. We do have some time left before our news conference concludes, so we'll start with Peter Cowan again of CBC News. Do you have any further questions? The question is about promotion. Since it requires a fairly wide uh, widespread use in order to be the most effective. What is government planning to do in order to get the word out there and encourage uptake? 
Um, so right now uh, we're partnering with the, with the federal government, so they have um, an ongoing uh, jurisdiction-wide uh, program to promote adoption and use of the app. Um, so we're working with them. Uh, our internal communications and marketing teams have also been um, working together to uh, build on what the federal government have, are doing. So um, I believe over the next few days and weeks, uh, you'll see some of that uh, as you travel around the internet, hopefully, um, and we'll encourage other people to use the app, but it's kind of based on the federal government's approach. We have a question from Jody Cook of NTV News. Uh, sure. Minister Sidley, you talked a little bit about the data use and uh, having this sort of be running in the background. We know that in the initial stages for Ontario, this became somewhat problematic because it did have to be, uh, from what I understand, on and, and consistently running and open in the background. Can you explain how that works for this particular app? Sure. Uh, well, I've been using it for a month now, and it, it hasn't, uh, I haven't noticed it. It hasn't been a hindrance. Um, you know, you kind of download the app. Um, you pick your province, so obviously you pick Newfoundland and Labrador, and then you can forget about it. Um, there is a nuance where um, if you turn off your data regularly, um, ideally you connect to the internet once a day. Um, that kind of does everything it needs to do in terms of exchanging codes with any, um, anyone else or any jurisdiction. Um, but, you know, it, it works even if you have your data turned off as long as your Bluetooth is working. Uh, in terms of passing codes to people that you're within two meters um, close to for 15 minutes. Um, so I guess that's the only thing to keep in mind is if you, uh, I know a lot of people to conserve their data, keep that off. Um, as long as you connect to Wi-Fi or data, we'd recommend once a day, um, then you're fine. So um, I don't have any further concerns. And do we have a question from Peter Jackson of the Telegram? I uh, downloaded this about a couple hours ago and nothing has happened, so I'm not sure it's still working. Um, but uh, I, I actually don't really have any other questions. Uh, I, I was going to ask whether it actually does tap uh, data very much, and I think you've already answered that. It's, it's very light use um, on data. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jasmine Pisano of Global News, do you have any further questions? I don't, thank you. Elizabeth Witten, All Newfoundland, Labrador. I actually had a question about battery life. Battery life. I know some of the other early developed apps completely drain the battery, and I'm curious about this one. Um, so my phone right now is about three years old, um, and I it, it hasn't been draining my battery. Um, so I know I don't want to get too technical, but um, I know Apple's been working um, in, on this new part of the iOS where. Uh, this app sits, which is kind of a special low battery use area, uh, just, I guess, speaking specifically from an Apple perspective, but um, it ha hasn't been a concern for me, and this is a relatively old phone, so um, I, I, I'd recommend it will not have an impact on the day-to-day -day use of people's phones and their battery life. Thank you. Brian Callahan, BOCN, do you have a further question? Yes, yeah, just one uh, further follow-up on the information for the public and communications campaigns and that sort of thing. I know there's a joint provincial-federal uh, push right now. Uh, there's been an indication that there will be a further communications campaign launched by the province at a later date or in the offing. Is that in the works right now? Can you give us an idea how that will uh, work and roll out and what the potential cost might be? Um, my understanding is right now um, there's no plan to incur any cost. Um, the internal teams will be working on that with the federal government. Uh, I think part of that depends on what happens with the, um, you know, if we need the app, if there's, you know, there's usage requirements, if our, our risk increases, which I, I defer to uh, Dr. Fitzgerald. Um, so at the moment, I guess we're just planning um, with the federal government's work and our internal teams, uh, the awareness. Um, but there, there could be, but right now there's no plan to incur cost. Thank you. And before we conclude today, I'm just going to run through one more time to see if anybody else has any further questions. So, Peter Cowan, do you have any more questions? I'm good, thanks. Jody Cook? No, oh, thank you. Peter Jackson? I'm good, thanks. Jasmine Pisano? No, thank you. Elizabeth Witten? I'm good, thanks. Brian Callahan? No, I'm fine as well, thank you. Well, thank you very much for attending today. Our time for questions has ended, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.